welcome everyone. I'm going to mute everyone. I'm just letting you know that um, I'll, we'll ask everyone to stay muted during the concert and we'll have a chance um, to chat a little bit afterwards. So I'm going to mute you all right now. So we limit the background noise. And uh, Pat, I need you to unmute yourself um, so we can hear you. Okay. And, um, great, you're unmuted. So I just wanted to um, let everyone know that, um, as you all know, today is the 75th anniversary of the Hiroshima atomic bomb and Patlamana, class of 65, is back um, by popular demand um, to give us a concert of her collection of peace songs and she's also going to share some slides with us. So without further ado, I will give you Pat in a minute before um, I do that, just two housekeeping announcements. As I mentioned, you're all going to be muted. So if you come in later, don't be surprised if um, I mute you. If for some reason you come in for a phone or something, I might have to um, ask you to mute yourself like Dorothy I cannot mute you um, and if you have any technical issues or technical problems please uh, send me a private message in the chat and after the concert is over we can unmute everyone and you can ask your questions if you have some questions for Pat and we can have a couple of minutes to have some um, discussion so without further ado Pat over to you thanks Aniko I have a question for you actually are you going to be saving the chat yes Okay, great, because I, I may not be able to read it while I'm performing, but if people want to put things in the chat, I'll read them later. Yes, sounds good. Okay, I'll thanks. You. No okay, problem. well, thanks for coming, everybody. And um, it's a pleasure to be here with my high school cohort and some other people as well. And uh, I'm just so glad that I was invited again, and especially on this very important day. Um, and what I'm going to start with is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you some pictures that I took um, when I was in Hiroshima in 2016, which is kind of what gave me the idea of um, doing some kind of a presentation about Hiroshima. So. Um, <clears throat> When we went, I went with my partner, Richard Maddox, and we decided that we would usually don't like to get a guide, but we decided we would get a guide to take us to Hiroshima because we wanted to make sure that we saw the important points. So the first place our guide took us was a building that was a hospital. And it had been a hospital before the bombing as well. And it was, as this plaque says, the hypo center, or we would call it ground zero of the bomb because they missed by a few hundred meters. And instead of bombing the bridge that they were aiming for, they bombed this hospital. But it really doesn't matter because the hospital would have been uh, completely destroyed even if they had hit the, the bridge. So as, as it says on the plaque, uh, carried to Hiroshima by, from Tinian Island by the Enola Gay, a US Army B-29 bomber, the first atomic bomb used in the history of humankind exploded approximately 600 meters above this spot. The city below was hit by heat rays of approximately 3,000 to 4,000 degrees centigrade, along with a blast wind and radiation. Most people in the area lost their lives instantly. The time was 8.15 a.m., August 6, 1945. So you can get some idea of the devastation here. And, oops, how do I move on now? <clears throat> okay. For some reason, it's not... <sighs> okay, I, I knew there would be issues. Um, I'm just trying to move on to the next slide, and it doesn't seem to want to do that. <clears throat> so this is a picture, and I'll see whether I can uh, make it large again. This is a picture of Hiroshima after the bombing. As you can see, there's just a couple of buildings standing in a very wide area. And I could give you the statistics, but I'm not going to. Um, but a huge area was completely destroyed, leveled. 
And then as you got further and further out, um, the, de the destruction got a little bit less and a little bit less. Okay. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the crew members of the Enola Gay in a, a, a parade, welcoming them home and um, recognizing them for their wonderful achievement. <clears throat> and I have a song that was written by Joe Crookston, a wonderful singer-songwriter who lives in Ithaca, New York. He says that his grandfather told him this story. This is a true story, and it's the story of his grandfather's participation in the war. It's called Abel Baker, Charlie Dog. My baby girl was born in 1943. The year before the Navy shipped me out and overseas. So I held her and kissed her and I said my goodbyes. Leaving Virginia with a thousand other guys. Leaving Virginia. In the South Pacific beneath the blistering sun on tinian island there was work to be done four thousand navy seabees on the ground crushing up coral and packing it down crushing and packing it down they never told us, forbidden to ask. They handed down the orders. We finished the task. We never knew what the runways were for. They said our job would be the one to end the war. Now the sea bees work like hell till the work gets done. We built four long runways laid straighter than guns. And the runways they glittered in the sunshine and fog. Named Abel and Baker and Charlie and Dog. Abel, Baker, Charlie and Dog. And the diggers and the cranes and my battalion guys We paved the way to the Japanese skies 8,500 feet of coral and clay And we built them all in just 53 days We built them in 53 days they never told us, forbidden to ask. They handed down the orders. We finished the task. We never knew what the runways were for. They said our job would be the one to end the war. Now the rumors flew around Tinian, none of us ever had a clue. What Enola Gay and little boy would do. And in the early August heat, we all got the news that the runways we built were the runways they used. Abel, Baker, Charlie, and Dog. They never told us, forbidden to ask. They handed down the orders. We finished the task. We never knew what the runways were for. They said our job would be the one to end the war.
So this building, they call it the dome, thank you. It was <clears throat> just about the only building that was left standing that was near Ground Zero. And um, <clears throat> most of any other buildings or devastation rubble that was left, they cleared away. <clears throat> but it's hard to sing and talk at the same time. So um, they decided to leave the dome standing as a symbol, as a monument to the devastation and to show what the atomic bomb can do and in hopes that people would see it and decide never to use the atomic bomb again. Now this was um, <clears throat> all around the dome was a large, large peace park built by the city of Hiroshima. They decided that they would pretty much dedicate their city for all time as a monument against war and especially against nuclear war. And so this Peace Park is enormous and it holds many, many monuments and shrines um, to all different kinds of people. And one of them is this Children's Peace Monument, which stands in memory of all children who died as a result of the atomic bombing. The monument was originally inspired by the death of Satako Sasaki who was exposed to radiation from the atomic bomb at the age of two. Ten years later, Sadako developed leukemia that ultimately ended her life. Sadako's untimely death compelled her classmates to begin a call for the construction of a monument for all children who died due to the atomic bomb. Built with contributions from more than 3,200 schools in Japan and donors in nine countries, the Children's Peace Monument was unveiled on May 5, 1958. And as I say, this was maybe one of the earlier monuments that was built in the park, but since then there have been many, many more. At the top of the nine meter monument, a bronze statue of a young girl lifts a golden crane entrusted with dreams for a peaceful future. Figures of a boy and a girl are located on the sides of the monument. The inscription on the stone block under the monument reads, this is our cry, this is our prayer for building peace in this world. On the surface of the bell hung inside the monument, the phrases, a thousand paper cranes and peace on earth and in the heavens are carved. And this is two views of the monument. I wanted to show you the view on the left because of all the children around it. There were a lot of children in the park the day we were there on field trips to visit the park. And the children line up to take turns ringing the bell, as I'm doing here with our tour guide, Miss Sato, who asked us to call her Sato-san. Now, <clears throat> the story of the peace crane, some of you may know that there's a legend in Japan that if you fold a thousand cranes, origami cranes, you can get your wish. Now, Sadako started folding cranes, hoping that her wish would be to live but unfortunately, I, want to, I think she got to about 644 cranes, something like that, and she died. And her, her classmates, her schoolmates, continued folding until they reached the thousand and they put those thousand cranes on her grave. And ever since then, crane, the crane, which used to be just a, a paper origami ornament, and you see this girl holding it up, it became a symbol of peace. And the... Uh, Peace Park in Hiroshima receives thousands, if not millions of peace cranes every year. People send them peace cranes and people make peace cranes there as well. They, you can buy origami paper and they'll show you how to make it. So what, what you see in the background here are strings and strings of peace cranes that they get and they put them together in necklaces like laves and then and sell them. <clears throat> And, oh, I have a slide here of Sadako Sasaki. And with that, I'm going to sing another song, which has a very interesting history. It started life as a Turkish poem by the Turkish poet Nazim Hikmet. A woman named Jeanette Turner translated the poem into English, and she sent it to Pete Seeger. And she um, asked Pete, she said, I think that this would be a very singable song. Would you write a tune for it? And Pete thought about it for a while and realized that the words go very well to a tune that already existed, that he already knew. 
And that tune was a tune of an old Scottish ballad called The Great Silky. And some of you may remember that Joan Baez sang that song on her first album way back in, I want to say, 1961. The tune, however, is not an ancient Scottish tune. It was written by a fellow by the name of Jim Waters. For whatever reason, he felt that his tune suited better than the traditional Scottish tune. So with words by Nazim Hikmet, translated by Jeanette Turner, with a tune that was found by Pete Seeger, written by Jim Waters, I will sing this song. I come and stand at every door, but none can hear my silent tread. I knock and yet remain unseen, for I am dead, for I am dead. I'm only seven, though I died in Hiroshima long ago. I'm seven now, as I was then. When children die, they do not grow. My hair was scorched by the swirling flame. My eyes grew dim, my eyes grew blind. Death came and turned my bones to dust. And that was scattered by the wind. I need no fruit, I need no rice, I need no sweets or even bread. I ask for nothing for myself, for I am dead, for I am dead. All that I ask is that for peace You fight today, you fight today So that the children of the world May live and grow and laugh and play Thank you. I should have told you to get your tissues handy for that song, but um, I suggest that if you haven't gotten them yet, you get some now because this next song is a little bit of a tearjerker also. Um, so this is an, another view of Peace Park. You can't really see how far it goes back here, but it's, it's all along the riverbank here and quite large. And uh, again, with many monuments, shrines, and the, uh, I believe that this picture was probably taken from the bridge that was the uh, target, which was important because it, I think um, many munitions were carried over it and so on. And it was in this river that many, many people plunged in order to keep their bodies from burning. And of course, many people died that way. So this song is by a fellow by the name of Rich Prezioso. And I'm not sure whether it's a true story or not, but it's a very beautiful story of reconciliation. So I hope you enjoy it. My grandmother had three sons. She dreamed about her children's children. 
Then came 1941. Only one son would see the war end. Joseph died marching in Bataan. Frank on the shores of Iwo Jima. When the bomb destroyed Japan, she thanked God and Harry Truman. She blamed the godless Japanese for having crushed her sweetest dreams. One thousand candles for my son. Every day I will remember In Illinois, far from her past Miss Nakamura still remembers She was six when she saw the flash That turned the world to smoke and ashes Mother taught her daughter well Run from the fire to the river There she found a living hell But not a mother or a father She blamed the... Oh, I'm sorry Though she survived with just a scrape Her family van Vanished into space. One thousand suns, a thousand cranes. Every day I will remember. My grandmother had three sons. She never dreamed she'd have a daughter But at the age of 81 She met a nurse named Nakamura It was a question only meant To make some talk and pass the hours About a picture by the bed a photograph of two young soldiers Hatred and anger stored for years Slowly melted into tears One thousand candles, a thousand cranes Every day I will remember I've a picture in my mind Of two women slowly walking August 6th, 1985 Walking to church to light a candle And they once asked me to explain why grown men play such foolish games? One thousand candles, a thousand cranes Every day I will remember So as I said, there are many monuments in Peace Park, and this is one of them. It is called the Cenotaph for the A-Bomb Victims. It was completed on August 6, 1952, and it contains a stone chest, which has a register inside, registering the names of those who are known to have died of exposure to the bombing. This was not necessarily victims who were immediately killed, but also those like Sadako Sasaki, who died later of leukemia, etc. As of August 6, 2006, it contained the names of 247,787 victims. 
The front of the stone coffin reads, let all the souls here rest in peace, for we shall not repeat this evil. And as you see, if you look through the cenotaph, you can see the dome. This was all very carefully um, planned. This is over the pond of peace. And here it's hard to see, but there's a flame. And this is not meant to be an eternal flame. It is meant to be a flame that is going to be extinguished when all atomic weapons are banned from the earth. So, oops. <clears throat> okay, my banjo might be in for a little bit of tuning after what I just did to it. Um, this might be a good time for this song, which was written in 1950 by Ed McCurdy. And uh, if you know it, sing along, but stay muted, please. Last night I had the strangest dream I'd ever dreamed before. I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. I dreamed I saw a mighty room All filled with women and men And the paper they were signed and said They'd never fight again And when the paper was all signed and a million copies made they all joined hands and bowed their heads and grateful prayers were prayed and the people in the streets below we're dancing round and round And swords and guns and uniforms Were scattered on the ground Last night I had the strangest dream I'd ever dreamed before I dreamed the world had all agreed to put an end to war. So now we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about Peace Pilgrim. Peace Pilgrim was a very interesting woman. She was born Mildred Lisette Norman on July 18, 1908, in the little town of Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. She had an ordinary girlhood, an ordinary youth. Her sister says that she was a flapper in the 20s, but she always was highly disciplined and she was always very firm in her convictions and in her values. She was the first woman to walk the entire Appalachian Trail. And in 1953, she assumed the name Peace Pilgrim, had herself made a tunic, as you see here, and started walking across the United States from California to New York with petitions asking for a, an end to the Korean War. And once she delivered those petitions, she just kept walking back and forth across the United States six or seven times. She spoke at colleges, churches, on radio, on television, about the steps toward inner peace, which she said was the most important part of peace because if we are not peaceful people, we cannot have a peaceful world. As she put it, I walk until given shelter, fast until given food. I don't ask, it's given without asking. Aren't people good? She never accepted money. 
She would accept offers of new clothing if it was absolutely necessary, such as if her sneakers literally had holes in them. She would accept a bed to sleep in. She would accept stamps so that she could continue with her correspondence that was very active. On July 7th, 1981, she was being driven to a speaking engagement when the car she was in got into a head-on collision and she and the driver were both killed instantly. Or as she would have put it, she shed her clay garment and passed on to a freer life. Now, it was not discovered until much later because she had given up her name, her all affiliations, um, never told anyone where she was from or who her family was, but it was discovered sort of accidentally later that she was from Egg Arbor City. Her sister, who's 105, still lives there, by the way. Um, so they built a park in her honor, right in the middle of town. And um, of course, this is the sign welcoming you in, into the entrance of the park with her statement, which she told everyone, her um, message of peace, overcome evil with good, falsehood with truth, and hatred with love. And if you go to that website that you see down there, peacepilgrim.org, you can see videos of her, you can hear audios, learn a lot about her life, and um, very interesting. So the way I found out about all of that was I found out about Peace Pilgrim at a peace uh, festival, wrote a song about her, sent it to peacepilgrim.org and was invited to Egg Harbor City to celebrate um, in one of the annual celebrations of her life. And Pete Seeger heard the song and he liked it very much. Now he and I stood at a peace vigil every Saturday from 12 to 2 for quite a few years, starting in 2003 when we invaded Iraq. And um, I don't remember how many years it went on, but a good seven, eight years maybe. But he said, you know, you could write another verse to that song about how even though Peace Pilgrim died many years ago, She's standing with us at this vigil. So of course I did write that verse. So now this song is a co-write with Pete Seeger. And it goes like this. And as you'll see, many of the words are Peace Pilgrim's own words. Her name was Peace Pilgrim, her age was unknown. She carried no money and she had no home. She walked our land for 28 years to show us we can overcome our hatred and our fears. She said, I will walk until I'm given shelter. I will fast until I'm given bread. I will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace. Her message was simple. It's all been said before. We cannot learn peace while we're waging war. Good will conquer evil, truth will conquer lies, love will conquer hatred, if only we will try. She said, I will walk until I'm given shelter. I will fast until I'm given bread. I will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace. She carried in her pockets everything she owned. Some nights she slept on pillows and some nights she slept on stones. One day out on the highway she shed her robe of clay. But the message that she carried still lives on in us today. She said, I will walk until I'm given shelter. I will fast until I'm given bread. I will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace. The
place to begin is deep within yourself then you can show the way to someone else when enough of us have learned to live in harmony the old ways will crumble and our love will set us free she said i will walk until i'm given shelter i will fast until i'm given bread i will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace as we stand here on this corner in sun and rain and snow we remember peace pilgrim and her words of long ago though her spirit moved to freedom in 1981 She's standing here among us as our prayers for peace are sung. She said, I will walk until I'm given shelter. I will fast until I'm given bread. I will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace. I will remain a wanderer until mankind has learned the way of peace. So, Phil Oakes was one of the greatest singer-songwriters of the 60s, in my humble opinion. And he wrote one of the greatest peace songs. In my opinion, Stranger's Dream, I think, is the greatest peace song ever written. I Ain't Marching Anymore is probably the second greatest. So I'm going to do that one now. <clears throat> Let's see, up here. Oh, I march to the Battle of New Orleans At the end of the early British War The young land started growing The young blood started flowing But I ain't a-marching anymore For I killed my share of Injuns In a thousand different fights I was there at the Little Big Horn I heard many men a lion, I saw many more a dying, but I ain't a marching anymore. It's always the old who lead us to the war, always the young to fall. Now look at all we've won with the saber and the gun, and tell me is it worth it all? For I stole California from the Mexican lands I fought in the bloody Civil War Yes, I even killed my brothers and so many others But I ain't a-marching anymore For I marched to the battles of the German Trench In a war that was bound to end all wars I must have killed a million men, and now they want me back again. But I ain't a marching anymore. It's always the rich who lead us to the war, always the poor to fall. Now look at all we've won with the saber and the gun, and tell me, is it worth it all? For I flew the final mission in the Japanese sky Set off the mighty mushroom roar When I saw the cities burning I knew that I was learning That I ain't a-marching anymore Now they've got a new force to conquer outer space A real-life version of Star Wars 
Call it peace or call it treason, call it love or call it reason. But I ain't a marching anymore. No, I ain't a marching anymore. I did change a little bit in that last verse to bring it up to date because it was a little out of date. Well, when I when I've been singing that song lately, I'm thinking, I do a lot of marching. I marched for gun sense in America here. I marched in the women's, one of, one of the, of course, many women's marches. This was in Hudson, New York, a couple of years back. This is the peace vigil that I was with uh, Pete and many others every Saturday for a number of years. Just today, I marched to reunite migrant families. Every Thursday, there's a group that, um, well, we don't march anymore. We ain't marching anymore. We used to march. <laughs> Since COVID-19, we've been standing on either side of a very busy highway holding up these signs. And um, you see, somebody always has a couple of signs saying honk for the children. We get a lot of honks. So as I say, just today, I was out there doing that. So I rewrote I ain't marching anymore. And I called this new song, I'll March Till I Can't March Anymore. And it goes like this. I marched down to Washington in 1963 and again in 1964. When I heard the words of Dr. King, a voice in me began to sing. I'll march till I can't march anymore. I marched in Manhattan to Dag Hammarskjöld Square to end the Indochina War. With Paxton Oaks and Seeger, I knew that I was eager to march till I can't march anymore. Now I walk a little slower, my hair is turning gray. But still, I carry on. I do a little something each and every day. Cause I can't do it when I'm gone. I marched to save our planet. I marched for women's rights. I marched for sensible gun laws. And yes, I marched with pride, straight and gay, side by side. And I'll march till I can't march anymore. I marched when the children were sent away and caged. When Muslims were banished from our shore. When George Floyd's life was shattered, I cried out Black Lives Matter. And I'll march till I can't march anymore. Now I walk a little slower, my hair is turning gray, but still I carry on. I do a little something each and every day, cause I can't do it when I'm gone. Now protesters are kidnapped by our men in unmarked cars. They're not even telling them what for. Our democracy is in trouble, so my efforts I must double, and I'll march like I never marched before, and I'll march till I can't march anymore. So, <clears throat> Aniko, do you think I have time for one more? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do one more by Phil Oaks. Probably his very best song. And uh, I make a reference to it in that song that I just did. When I say, I'll do it because I can't do it when I'm gone. The name of this song is When I'm Gone. <laughs> There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone. And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone. 
And you won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here I won't feel the flowing of the time when I'm gone All the pleasures of love will not be mine when I'm gone My pen won't pour the lyric line when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here I won't breathe the brandy air when I'm gone no, I can't even worry about my cares when I'm gone. Won't be asked to do my share when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. And I won't be running from the rain when I'm gone. No, I can't even suffer from the pain when I'm gone. Can't say who's to praise and who's to blame when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Won't feel the golden of the sun when I'm gone The evenings and the mornings will be one when I'm gone Can't be singing louder than the guns when I'm gone so I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here All my days won't be dances of delight when I'm gone And the sands will be shifting from my sight when I'm gone Can't add my name into the fight when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here and I won't be laughing at the lies when I'm gone No, I can't question how or when or why when I'm gone Can't live proud enough to die when I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone and you won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone so I guess I'll have to do it I guess I'll have to do it I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Well, thank you, everybody. I hope that we all can do a little something in our own way. There's an awful lot to be done. So um, I guess if, yeah, if you want to unmute yourself, if you want to say something, I'm, I'm looking in the chat a little bit and thank you very much for your messages. Does anybody have any questions? Do you have questions about Peace Pilgrim or about Hiroshima? I'm going to start off just by saying I'm verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm active, you know, in People Camp and in Friends for Nonviolent World, which is a very activist group that does peach mar peace marches on the bridges in Minneapolis. Anyway, I live in Elgin and I, I can't even talk. I'm just so overcome with how good you are. I mean, I'm. Oh, thank so you. I, 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 I sent Pat a note about how I actually got to meet Ed McCurdy because I was at the college elementary school with Mary McCurdy, his daughter, and, it, and I was invited to his birthday party in 1957, or no, 58, because I was younger. younger. Anyway, um, this was so moving for me, um, that's all I can say, and you're a good writer, and the rest of that I sent you. Well, thank you, Joy. I, I didn't hear everything you said. It was a little scratchy, but but thank you. Um, and I'm still going to be listening, but I'm going to be um, finding 
a, uh, a, a link to a concert that I'm going to be in on Sunday. I'm going to do some of these same songs, but my friend Charlene Leahy is going to be with me, and she's written some beautiful songs as well, and she's going to be doing her song. So I'm going to find that link um, while, while other people are talking, if you don't mind. I just want to thank you so much, just Carol. Um, thank you, Carol. Really great. What a beautiful voice. Really nice. Well, thank you. Oh, dear. Anybody else? While well, I'm looking for this. Oh, geez, I don't even know how to find it. Let's see. Well, Pat is looking. I just I have a quick question. I was taking attendance because I just um, want to I keep up with our database to see who it, who was here and I send a private message to Dorothy and Sherry because I haven't found you in our database. That's okay to have guests. I don't know if you're an alumna or not. Um, so if you could just respond to me in the chat, um, just give me your last name so I can um, have our, our record straight. I'd, I would appreciate that. Thank you, Dorothy. I see you're typing. I don't know, Sherry, if you can hear us, if you're still here. Um, I'm looking for you too. Our help would be great. So I can also um, share the link with Pat. And then Pat just shared uh, the link with you in the chat too. So everyone, if you look at the concert information, is already in the chat. And I'm going to post it for Facebook viewers. If, um, Oh, great. I'm going to put it um, in the remarks of our recording. Um, and after that, I'm actually going to say goodbye to the Facebook viewers. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm going to cut the Facebook um, feed, but I updated the link. So that concert is there. And I'm going to say goodbye to the Facebook um, viewers. Thank you so much for coming. Goodbye. And if you'd like, I just put my email into the chat. You could give that to the Facebook viewers as well. And if anybody sure. wants to contact me, um, feel free to email me. And how many Facebook viewers were there, Aniko? Uh, uh, there were um, on and off uh, two, three people, uh, but then um, actually Deborah started there and then she came over here, so we didn't um, lose her, lose her. But, um, okay. Thank you, Dorothy, uh, for your consideration. All right, then. If no, no one has any questions or remarks, I'm going to thank Pat for an other fabulous, wonderful concert. Thank you so much for taking the time to putting this beautiful um, collection and touch, uh, touch very touch, touching songs and uh, the presentation as well. The two together were actually very, very tremendous on, on this very important day. And thank you so much for taking the time and giving us this wonderful experience today. Thank you, Aniko. I just want to say a few people chatted to me privately, and I'm sorry I didn't have time to respond to you, but thanks everyone for just for being here and for any comments that you made or, or didn't make, whatever. It, I just really appreciate you being here, and I um, it was an honor to be able to do this. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.